Morning. I'm Jim Roselli. I'm Russ Dietrich. And, and well, I need, I need help. Jim Roselli's about to push me in the lake. <laughs> And welcome to the times of your life. I've done shows from many studios, but I've never done a show from a ferry. Uh, here, uh, historically, this morning, we're going to take you back 202 years and talk about the history of this wonderful, wonderful facility we have in our community. And it all came about because of Fred Squadcott, who caught me at the Yorker Museum in Sherman a few weeks ago. Fred, I want to thank you for making these arrangements. Well, Jim, I, I want to thank you for being here, and uh, this is, if it's a first, uh, that's great because uh, we're running by generator this morning. We uh, have uh, the privilege of having you and Jim, Jim or uh, Russ here. We have access cable five here, taping it, and one of the reasons for doing this this morning, and I so much appreciate it, is I'm a member of the Historic Vessels Association, which included the ferry, the Chautauqua Bell, and the Sea Lion. Well, still being in there, we've talked about for years getting some history on record. And uh, this is what we're trying to do this morning. As you alluded to, uh, you'll have guest John Cheney and his wife, Roger Miller. And what we want to do is go back a few years and explain to the public this jewel we have. And I just want to thank you and Russ for being here, taking the time. And let's keep our fingers crossed that my generator doesn't quit <laughs> because we want to make sure we get this on tape to be shared by more people over the years. And, and to me, John Cheney and his wife and Roger Miller are icons just like you and Russ. And you need to get that on tape. And we hope someday, uh, maybe across in the building uh, in Stowe, that we can have a kiosk there with parts of this tape in this interview this morning you're doing to show people history of Chautauqua Lake and the ferry. So thank you for being here. You know, it's great, Jim, for us to have the opportunity. You know, Chautauqua County has a tremendous history, and Chautauqua County has a great historical group of people, including you and others, for to gather this material uh, day after day put it in a depository so that, like you said, in the future, people are going to be able to see exactly what happened when Jim Roselli pushed me in the lake. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And uh, you might want to get to John Cheney and his wife. I know they're eager to talk. But uh, uh, thanks again for being here. And, and that's what we're going to do is share the history and share the wealth. Well, Fred, I do have to ask you a question because, you know, uh, there's a, sometimes people today are talking about why don't we remember history? but you're making an effort to let uh, the future generations remember this. Oh yes, and, and there's so much in this county, there's so many good things happen, and I hate to use the, 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 the saying that Vince Horrigan has, but we're bricklayers, Jim, we're not brick throwers. And uh, thank God you're here, and uh, so it's, a, it's kind of a cloudy morning, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a good show. Thank you very much. We're gonna meet some wonderful people here on a 202 year history of the ferry. What a pleasure, what a privilege Russ and I are going to have talking to a gentleman who can take us back many years. John Cheney, good morning. Good morning, Jim. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. We're pleased you're here to give us a look back. How, how far back do you go, John, with your first remembrance of this ferry? About 1935, I brought, uh, my grandfather brought me up. I went over to Clayton Hoyt's at Stowe on the ferry, we did. I bought a Guernsey calf, come back, and rode back to Bemis because we had a wagon there and uh, horses and, and uh, take the calf home. We got about a quarter of the way across the lake and the calf decided to go home. <laughs> he went off the lake on the, in the mid, towards the middle of the lake and I went after him. We swam around a while and we ended up in the swamp up there. Uh, I had quite an education from it because we got back in the swamp and everybody was hollering and yelling, looking for me, and I never let out a peep, but when they found me, well, I didn't sit down for about a week. Uh, it's a very, that's how I remember my first rider on the ferry. John, we see a car on the ferry this morning, we see bicycles, we see a lot of people, but there's been a lot of other items transported across this ferry over the years, haven't they, including livestock and others? Yes, uh, for years. I can remember that we, we took a herd of cows from Stowe over to Bemis. They pastured them in here now where the golf course is, take them back in the fall. It, uh, my uncle was operating the ferry at that time, and it just so happens I thought I was very privileged to go until after the cows and calves left. John, you brought your lovely wife with you. Good morning. 
Good morning, Jim. Well, the obvious question uh, at this point is, how many years have you been married? 57 years last May. Where, did he propose on the ferry? <laughs> no, not on the ferry. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know a whole lot about the ferry at that time. Well, you do now. I've been across it, but I didn't know anything about it then. Yep. Well, we're delighted we have this opportunity here because John is, well, like Fred said, an icon in our community, and we're going to try to, in a short amount of time, but put in 202 years history of this ferry, John. Well, I could go into it almost year by year because of Art Thomas and the history of the ferry and that. Uh, Art and I didn't always agree, but uh, <laughs> he took it over, and from the count when the county gave it up for the Sea Lion uh, Limited Corporation, which I was a member of, the ferry was sunk. Uh, it was the first that I come aboard with it with Steenberg. Kenny Steenburn and uh, Dick Lloyd and all of the old Sea Lion board members. Ernie Cowan was a very prominent operator and we had to put the deck back on, the ferry had sunk, it was quite a job. It was, we had a lot of fun doing it, all volunteer help and that's the way it is today. Uh, John, how was the ferry powered in its first days, in its early history? What was the power used on the ferry? The first they had on it was they tried poles, but the bottom's so soft here that poles would stick in the mud and they'd lose them. So uh, they ended up either paddling it or rowing. There was first they'd tie two or three rowboats together and rowed back and forth across. Then they got... Uh, pine logs, six across, that way they could take a horse in a wagon, and they pulled it in uh, a rope on the ferry, and it would uh, pull it back and forth. They had a, I guess you call it a windlass there on the end, they tried that, and uh, walking in circles with a rope around, yeah. the horses would get dizzy, stagger, and that didn't work. They ended up with mules, and uh, they didn't know any better, and they'd walk all day in a circle. Then they went from a rope went over a wheel, and there was kind of handles on the rope, and anybody that rode on it would grab a handle and pull on it, walk back around, grab the handle. It was coming out of the water. It was kind of a wet, drippy thing, but it would save 28 miles going around the lake with a team of horses or walking or that sort of thing. It was a necessity back in them days. I, I, I've noticed this morning the trip takes just very few minutes, but what would a trip take in those days? I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a lot more work. I, I, can, I can imagine those guys who were doing that rowing, they were in pretty good shape come fall, weren't they? If they wasn't, there was something else wrong with them. No, but it was interesting, the history on the ferry and how it's gone over the years and uh, what it's cost to go across in cents. Part of, it was a quarter of a cent, a half a cent. I've got signs and things like that on. I've got a whole notebook of the things year by year through this. I could go through with it, but it just amounts to different things when the first gas engine was put on it and then uh, uh, well it went from gas to steam and right like that and the steam engine didn't last too much because of the temperatures it would get in, in that uh, then we went to old car engines and things like that it improved the time and then the county took it over and that was supposed to be the end of all things, and it was <laughs> the end, because they run it until the bridge went across, and that was through. So that was there, then Ernie Cowan and his group, and I give credit to Ernie Cowan in particular, and we took it, our group took it over. We had a good time doing it, had it running at a very profitable rate, and then I better not say it. But. <laughs> you're, allowed to, you're allowed to think it, John, but don't say it. 
everything had to pay for itself then, so they raised the ferry rates up. Nobody run the ferry, and it went down. And then in about, I don't remember the dates without looking them up, but that was the first time we come back. And then during the war, I'm backing up a little here, uh, the ferry was run in, uh, that was when the county more or less got interested in it. And the guy was running the ferry, could make more in an hour in Erie working in the steel plant than he could running the ferry, so it didn't run. And then they, they took it over more or less. They even, saw, believe it or not, they salted the channel, and that was a disaster because uh, the paddle wheels splashed onto the deck, the ice got up, sunk the ferry. And that was the first I remember doing any work with the group. We'd come up and had to replace the deck because that more or less floated off with the wave action when this ferry was half underwater. And uh, I've been kind of playing with it, shall we say, enjoyed working with it with the different groups and everyone that until they'd get a hold of it we got to make money or it raise the rates and they went down. I can go through that. It's really pathetic when the government handles anything and that's our biggest <laughs> problem today with the inspectors that don't know enough to come in out of the rain and I can give you names if you want me. <laughs> yes? Uh, John Cheney, you're oh, a delight. <laughs> I think we're talking about 200 years of history of the ferry. How long has the Cheney name been on the shores of Chautauqua Lake? Too long. <laughs> no, not long enough is a better answer, John. Well, they're the first that come in, the Bemises and the Cheneys come in as a group into Mayville, and I can remember, of course, it's, I could talk about the history of the lake for years, but they come down to Long Point and on the ice because that was when they moved. They come out of the rivers because they couldn't, it took so long to chop their way through the woods. and. The men come ahead to Bemis. That was, uh, I can't remember, one of the Bemises, the Cheneys, and the Griffiths. And uh, speaking of that, Chris over here, she's related to the Cheneys, the poor girl. She's one of my captains. Uh, it's, I can put history and talk for a week on this. Well, we certainly are glad we've got this moment to talk about 202 years. We'll do our best to get in everything that's possible, John. We'll get back to you. With, we've got some other wonderful people we want to certainly get some comments from. But let's remind the audience the times of your life on this Saturday morning, August the 31st of the year 2013, is broadcasting direct from the ferry, and we're moving across the lake at this very moment. Russ Dietrich, what an experience. Well, it's a fabulous experience. So just to sit and listen to John reminisce, and uh, you know, he's not even reminiscing about what he's read someplace, he's reminiscing about what he lived. <laughs> and uh, that's extremely fun. How many, Mrs. Cheney, how many times do you feel you've gone across this lake on the ferry? I wouldn't have the faintest idea, but a lot. A, a ballpark figure, maybe. I, I can't even give you a ballpark figure. <laughs> but we go back and forth and back and forth whenever there's somebody to take us, they're to take, you know, and sometimes that's 42 times a day, sometimes it's 60 times a day. I'm not always on it. Um, you know, it depends how much traffic there is, and uh, yeah, so back and forth a lot, but I have no idea how much. Oh, we thank you. Roger, get up here for a moment. Let's say hello to Roger Miller here. Good morning. Uh, my name's Roger Miller. Hi, Joe. And you're associated in what way? I, I live right beside the ferry. I've lived there for 30 years, and I help the ferry whenever I can and people leave their keys at home and I open the doors and I, if it floats away, I grab it with a grappling hook and whatever it takes. Give us a sample or two of e crazy experiences you've had here. Uh, I had just, there's been people from Alaska stopped by to see it run and there's been people, one friend of mine in Denver, he was walking down the aisle where he worked and he saw a picture of a, friend at well one of the guys that worked there uh, and he had a picture of him and his wife in front of the Stowe Ferry and the friend of mine said well what? he said oh you were at the Stowe Ferry and the guy said well how do you know where that was and he says well I've been there too <laughs> so I have people from all over the country have stopped by 
and they appreciate the ferry and they always appreciated it. Some used to go to school in Bemis and rode the ferry to go to school over in Bemis. So it's, it's been a long relationship. Well, we're delighted to try to put across the wonderful story of 202 years. I would like to say uh, thank you to the Cheney family and all the volunteers, but especially John, Betty, and Martha, because without them, I don't believe the ferry would exist. I think everybody agrees with that. I'd like to add to that. If it wasn't for Roger, we wouldn't keep going. <laughs> yeah. I say that with emphasis. Roger is the heart. If I and Marlene was here back when we was having real problems with it, they mowed the grass and kept the ferry presentable to people. And it's Roger's. I'm not going to say I think I've drawn more coffee than I have trips across the lake. Marlene would bring them out every morning, and and I just can't tell people how much Roger is is kept this ferry going. If it wasn't for him, I'd have given up 40 years ago. This is called the Mutual Admiration Society. Yeah, I say, I say that for all the people. I got six or eight sitting right over there on the bench with the red shirts and that in uh, Roberta and Doug and, and Randy and I, I'm not even going to try to m mention them all but uh, we're going to get as many as we can on today John yeah thank you very much John Cheney and Betty Cheney what a wonderful moment here this is the times of your life on News Talk 1240 WJTN radio I'm Jim Roselli and I'm Russ Dietrich and the program has been sponsored from its inception by the Jamestown Savings Bank we'll have that message right now Thank you very much, Brent. Good morning again, everybody. Welcome back. As we continue our visit here on the ferry, and we want to introduce you to many people who are part of this wonderful history. Your name, please. Uh, my name's Margaret Mary Wagner from Stowe. And how, are, how long have you been associated with this wonderful historical time? Oh, this has been great. I retired uh, several years ago, and I have a commercial 100-ton captain's license. So I called up uh, John two years ago and says, how would you like a couple captains to be volunteers on Sunday night? And he said, yes, we'd love it. And you've loved it since. It's a wonderful opportunity, fabulous people, people who are returning to the community after 70, 80 years and getting on the ferry, uh, such great stories. What is it about that uh, nostalgic moment people want to bring back in their lives? It really brings back their childhood, their first trip with their parents on the ferry. And that's what I think most people recall uh, from the 60s and the 70s, and if you're older, a lot sooner than that, in the 30s. When do you re what do you recall about your first trip? Well, actually, my first trip was about two and a half years ago, and I said, wow, this is the oldest cabled ferry in the United States. And this is something I'd like to give back and contribute to the community by being a volunteer. Isn't that wonderful, Russ? What's the most unusual thing that's happened to you during those two years as captain of the ferry? Well, I think the most unusual thing is some people don't realize the ferry goes to the other side. <laughs> and so I don't know if they thought you just sit on the boat or something. So some people get on and uh, they say, where are you? You're just going to let we just turn around, right? I said, no, you go to the other side. So that's probably the most unusual thing. And uh, certainly if we've had more than our share of dogs with their owners, and uh, it's just a great experience. And one night we had a lady uh, with a parrot on board. I 
was ready to ask any other animals who've been on board. Well, I think the parrot and the cats, uh, a few people with wine bottles and glasses have come through. <laughs> Do you have anybody, have anybody fish off the ferry while you're going back and forth? Well, they, little kids think they can, and we have to sort of go over and nudge them and say, your line will get caught and everything, and you won't have a pole when you're done. It's, you know, just your enthusiasm, of course, indicates you love doing this volunteer work. Yeah, you know, after uh, a life, uh, 35 years in healthcare, doing something so different is what's so refreshing. So uh, I just love the water, both Chris and I have uh, sailed over 10,000 miles, uh, Erie Barge Canal, Hudson, East Coast, over to the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and uh, Chris went on and sailed on to Cuba. So we uh, have done a lot of sailing. Well, Chris, it's time to meet you. Good morning. Nice to meet you too, Jim. Well, give us a little bit of history of your involvement. Well, I've lived here all my life. We about a mile down from the ferry here, and I spent a lot of time sailing my small boat around here and water skiing. I spent a lot of time trying to stop the ferry when I was a kid because it was fun. So I'm doing this driving for penance <laughs> to make up for all the times I made it stop. Do you have any idea how many times you've been across the lake between Bemis and Stowe? We do about 35 trips every night that we do it, and I've done it since I was a child, so probably hundreds and hundreds. And you'll continue to do it? You bet. As long as the ferry's here, we're going to drive it. Do many people uh, bring cameras on board? Do, is there a, you know, a, a, a real urge to, to get a memento of their visit? Oh, absolutely. People might come with two and three cameras, different lenses. And of course, the iPhone, such a great, convenient convention. Uh, people want our pictures on the ferry, so we actually take a lot of pictures for people. And then we're in a lot of pictures also. Talking about pictures, I bet you've seen a lot of beautiful uh, sunsets, haven't you? Phenomenal sunsets. Uh, it's just am amazing. And then you'll see a hot air balloon go over the ferry, and it is, it, the, the, it's so picturesque here. It's a great place to bring your family, have a picnic at the dock, and just watch all the activities. You know, after hearing what you've done with your life there, Chris, the obvious question is, what's on your bucket list next? Uh, I want to sail on the Mediterranean, actually, if we can. And that's big, big high on my bucket list. You're making plans for how soon? Well, anytime, anytime the, the opportunity arises and we can get away from driving the ferry. John, you're hearing about this, these two wonderful volunteers here. Well, I just can say this. There are two of many, and if it wasn't for the people that volunteer, this ferry would not be running today. And I can't say enough thanks to all of them. And if something breaks down, it isn't a disaster. It's a challenge. Who's going to fix it? And it isn't what you know. It's who you know, and I stand behind that all the time. And some of our biggest problems, and I'll get hit in the ribs for saying this, but it's politicians. And yeah, I, I try to tell the truth and have no, yes, they're all saying quiet. John, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for future generations to hear this broadcast and view it. <laughs> You've left some gem, gems of thoughts here for them to think about. We'll get back to you a bit later, but uh, it, we, we certainly are, are, are learning. Russ and I are, are, are thrilled to have this opportunity to realize, you know, what, what a pulse of the community we feel when we do shows like this. Uh, it's, you can just feel the community breathing and living. That's what's exciting about the ferry. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. I'll see you on the Mediterranean. If you do go there, stop by Sicily, will you? That's where my parents were born. For you, we'll do that. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Wonderful volunteers here at the Bemis Point uh, Ferry. Uh, Fred, we're ready for another guest, and uh, we certainly want to include everybody that deserves to be here. Yeah, well, Vince Horgan, I think, wants to, he's, uh, he's on board, and he's going to go back a little bit on the history of the Bemis Point area. And uh, so, uh, Randall Burt would be ideal. Come on over, Randall. Hey, Randy, get Randy first. Yeah, sure. He's the gentleman that came up to our studio. 
wanted to be sure that we had the arrangements to make this broadcast. We're delighted we do have them, and we're thankful to you, Randall, for the opportunity to be here and giving us this experience. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate you coming out. Um, you're on one of the most historic places in uh, Chautauqua Lake, and you got some of the most historic people, and um, I'm just appreciative to have you here. Well, you know, you received a, an email, I guess, from Joanna Dahlbeck, and she said, uh, please ask whatever happened to the Gadfly touring boat that used to be on the lake. Yes, and I didn't have an answer for her, and I know somebody that just might have an answer would be John. John, um, the Gadfly, do you know whatever became of it? Yes. That was taken to Buffalo when the sea lion went to Buffalo. Uh, it was run the Gadfly. Yeah, the gad, Gadfly touring boat. Yeah. Well, we'll let him think for a little more one on that. Okay. Okay. What do you call the Gadfly? Well, what boat? There's about six of them. Oh, that I don't know. She just asked about the Gadfly, the, gad the big touring boat that was on the lake. Think about it, John. We'll get back to you later. Thank you, Randall. Thank you. All right, Randall Burt, one of the pilots here. Uh, Vince Horrigan is here. Russ Dietrich. We'll have a company of him over to our microphone. Vince, it's good to see you here. It's great to be here on the ferry again, Jim. What uh, it brings back so many memories as a young boy coming across uh, 1955, being car number nine, getting on the ferry coming from Cleveland. Well, uh, the history of this area has always fascinated you, even though, I, if I remember correctly, you weren't born in this area. No, I, born in Cleveland, Ohio, and in 1955, my mom and dad bought a little cottage over here in Bemis. So coming from Cleveland, there was only one way to get to Bemis Point, and that was on the ferry. So as a kid, I, as soon as we got here, I'd count the cars, and if we were number nine, I had an 80% chance of getting on because sometimes it was a truck or something, and they only took eight. But I couldn't wait to go swimming. So this ferry, to me, brings back so many great memories. This summer, we had our grandkids on it, and they get so excited. And I don't know if they're excited because they're on the ferry or they're excited because we're excited they're on the ferry. <laughs> well, Vince, we're delighted to see you here this morning. That's an unexpected pleasure. And, uh, of course, you're a busy man with your campaign at the moment, but right now you're strictly uh, devoting your attention to the history of this area. Well, that's absolutely true. You know, uh, at the village of Bemis Point, of course, I was on the board there, and the ferry is one of those attractions that brings people here and they talk about the kids they talk about their time and as uh, as we look at village of bemis point being renov you know we got all this project stuff going on i think we're committed to uh, make sure that we point pe people towards this ferry as well as bemis point so uh mr cheney's been uh, an, an incredible motivator and uh he's been the leader to keep this going so we're excited about it it's a great attraction we love the ferry you know, Vince, as you said, the, the ferry is a destination for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, bringing them together here at this spot on the, on the lake has just been phenomenal for them, hasn't it? Well, it really has. Um, and, you know, we also looked uh, in the village of Bemis Point with all of, the, uh, with all of the parking issues we have. We even looked at the ferry being able to solve some of those problems. Come to Bemis Point, park and stow, take the ferry across, enjoy, walk around the village and then take the ferry back and, uh, you know, leave a few extra spaces for somebody else. So the ferry not only brings people here, it's a destination, it's an attraction, and uh, it's just one of those things that is a real source of pride for us. Well, Vince, we're delighted to have this opportunity. I think John wants to make a comment. I think the thing here that's got to be emphasized the most, this ferry isn't any one person, it's volunteers. And it's the volunteers and the, the people, I guess I happen to know, that we've had major breakdowns. I can call Fitzsimmons in Buffalo and have a hydraulic engineer expert down here and nothing. You give a call to Cummings Engine, they come. And it's those type of people at the drop of a hat. We had a major breakdown this year. It was fixed in three days. Any other place, it would have taken them a month. And it isn't what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> and thanks to all the volunteers, and I am 
emphasize it, and the politicians scare the hell out of me. <laughs> oh boy, what a highlight on this show today. <laughs> well, you know, one thing about John, he always, he always tells it like it is, and so I fully appreciate that. Uh, you know, I, I just want to say, when I'm speaking of the volunteers, my best friend, Greg Jones, is a new uh, pilot here for the for the ferry, and uh, he absolutely loves it. And, uh, I, you know, when I finally retire, I'm going to see if Mr. Cheney will let me take my uh, captain's license here to be a pilot for the ferry. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Uh, thank you, Vince Horrigan. Thank you. Uh, the Times of Your Life on News Talk 1240 WJTN Radio on this Saturday morning. The studio is the ferry here at Bemis Point in Snow. And what a wonderful story is unfolding here with John Cheney, Betty Cheney, Roger Miller, and Randall Burton, Fred Crosscut, and we're meeting more people. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, please. Martha Anderson. Martha, it's a pleasure to meet you here. You're busy with your camera all morning long here. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get it on film a little bit. Give us your, uh, you know, your involvement here with this. Well, John is my dad, Betty Lou is my mom, and I've just kind of, through the years, been kept up with them and helping them out, doing whatever they need help with here for the organization. I'm the secretary for the Sea Lion Project, which is the head of the Ferry Association now, um, trying to help out with whatever they need help with. I don't drive, but I could do almost everything else. <laughs> you haven't driven the ferry yet? No, I haven't. The day is not over. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They threaten me with that all the time. <laughs> but Martha, what, when do you recall in your childhood that you took a ride on the ferry? When? Oh, many times. And I used to work when I was younger at the Good Morning Farm, so I took it back and forth to work because the bridge wasn't here then. So you had to wait sometimes, reload the cars before you went on it. But now we just all do it with volunteer help. We have wonderful, wonderful people that work with us and give a lot of hours, a lot of time. And we have such support through the community and the sheriffs and both towns, Bemis and, and town of North Harmony. Can't say thank you enough to everybody that helps us out all the time. And we've had boaters stop and we had a floating piece the other day, picked it up. We had a diesel mechanic help that was staying at Rogers. You know, people are just wonderful with all the volunteer work that we have. and. All the hours that my parents put into this are unbelievable. They spend more time on this winter, summer, spring and fall than, than anybody realizes. But it runs wonderfully and they keep it going. It's a great piece of history. I have to say this, Martha. You're the daughter of John Cheney. I, I can't imagine there's a boring moment in your life. <laughs> no, never a dull moment at all. <laughs> Uh, and we can't tell some of those stories. <laughs> but no, <laughs> it, it's never been boring, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, you talk about traveling back and forth in those days. It's interesting to realize that there was a time in history when people on this side of the lake never knew or never met the people on the other side of the lake. And I bet a lot of relationships developed once the ferry began to operate between Stowe and Beamons. I would think so, because now, I mean, a lot of times people will park the cars in Stowe and ride to Bemis, hang out for the day, do whatever they have to, and come back. And, and you can, it is, it's, it's a real connection between the two, especially before the bridge was here. It was summertime only, or you skated across. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see it keep going. Thank you very much, Martha. Let's meet the others here that are on the ferry, and we're moving at this time. Um, we should point out to the audience, and if they watch the video, they'll see it, of course, but all morning long, we've seen, I don't know how many cyclists come on to take this ride. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, please. Roberta Scruz. Nice to meet you, Roberta. This is Russ Dietrich. <laughs> how are you involved with the ferry? I pilot the ferry. ferry. How often? Whenever I'm called. <laughs> yeah, I started in 2011. Uh -huh. why, why did you want to volunteer? I love the historical value of the ferry. It gets me out amongst people, and I like to be around and see all of the amazing things that people have to say and do when they come on the ferry. Have you had uh, opportunities to meet people might I say, all of, from all over the world? Yes, I've from many different places, Massachusetts, Texas, all different areas like that. And through the GPS, it directs them to the shortest span across the lake, 
So they get down here to the ferry and they're like, oh, what do I do? Do I just drive on? So it's amazing how surprised people are to actually see that there's something like this still running. You mentioned you're the captain. What are the duties of the captain on the ferry while it's operating? Um, mostly I watch for the safety of people. I watch to make sure how the ferry is going across. I watch the boats that cross in front of and behind us so to make sure there's safety there and just to make sure the people are having a good time. You know what's interesting? The technology of the day because you use the words or the letters GPS. That has changed lives, I think. It certainly has changed life. <laughs> yep, they, I don't know. It's, uh, it's good, though, because that way a lot of people have experienced the ferry that never would have experienced the ferry. And then there's young kids that come on with the parents, and we have the brochure we hand out, and they love to take it and go to school and do a show and tell that they rode the ferry. So it's getting across that way also. Have you ever met when you get about halfway or a third of the way across, somebody on the ferry wants to get off, get back, <laughs> No, that's never happened. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> well, let's meet the gentleman next to you here. And we continue the story of 202 years history here of the ferry. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, sir? Doug Hay. Doug, you're another volunteer? Yes, uh, a couple years ago there was an article in the Post Journal looking for volunteers to pilot the, the ferry. So I responded and called John and said I was interested. And he said, well, do you have a pilot's license? I said, no, I don't want to fly. I want to run the ferry. <laughs> he said, no, he said, you need a pilot en engineer's license. And I said, well, how do you do that? He said, well, you got to take a test. I said, well, OK. And he said, do you have a watercraft certificate? And I said, no. He said, well. You need to start there. And he said, then once you've got that, call me back. So I went to the sheriff's course, took that water safety course, called John, and he said, well, we just gave the test. He said, so unless you want to drive to Albany to take it, he said, it'll be a while. He said, but I'll call you back. Well, things didn't work out for me that summer. And a year ago, I called John back and said I was still interested. So he called two days before they were coming down to inspect the ferry and says, they'll be here at 9 o'clock if you want to take the test be here. So I came over, took the test with two other fellas, and we all passed. And since that time, I've uh, ha had opportunity to run the ferry this past spring uh, with school groups in uh, May and June. I happened to be retired and able to come out and volunteer. And it's amazing the number of kids that live in this area that had never been on the ferry. And you know, some of them are a little hesitant about getting on a vessel on the water. They hadn't even been on boats. And a number of them, you, they get in the middle of the ferry and stand there. We'll be halfway across, and I'm walking from one end of the ferry to the other. And they say, well, when are we going? You tell them, we're, we're moving. And they can't believe it because it's so smooth and everything that you really don't know you're moving. And, and I've even had people that have come on with their cars that don't realize that we're under motion because you're not speeding across the lake. It's a small, it's a slow pace. It takes us six, seven minutes to make a crossing and everything. And with the weight of the ferry and everything, you just don't know that you're underway. But uh, it's really great. Like you said, you had to take a test. Uh, did you pass the parallel parking part of the test? Well. <laughs> For a ferry, there is no parallel parking. It's all straight in and straight out. So yeah, you, you had to have the right answer to, to pull in forward and back out backwards, you know, type of thing. But you know, one of those state exams that takes a little creativity. But you know, so many things happen with the ferry, like this Sunday night at 9.30, we're gonna shoot fireworks off of the ferry. It used to happen all the time, but it's been a number of years. And so this Sunday night, the Sunday of Labor Day weekend at 930 they're gonna put the ferry out in the middle of the lake and shoot fireworks off be an outstanding display and I would encourage people to to come out and get a seat on the Bema side or the Stowe side and and view the the fireworks but it's one of those opportunities with a historic vessel like we've got here that doesn't come along every day and you know our season is from Memorial Day to Labor Day uh, depending on weather and everything, and, and it's a great opportunity. And, you know, 
probably three quarters of the people that come out are people that have grown up in this lake and remember before the Chautauqua Lake Bridge opened in 1982, this was the only way to get from one side to the other without driving around the Mayville end or around the Jamestown end to get to the other side. A year ago, I had five generations of a family in five different vehicles come onto the ferry and they were here for a family reunion and the, the great grandfather is the one that got them to come. The kids had never been on a ferry before in their lives, hadn't been on a boat. So took the five cars across. Later before I finished that afternoon, three of them came back. They said, we'd never experienced this. We had to do it again. And people that see the sign on the stow side that says ferry open, come down to check it out. What is it about? They get on and they can't believe it. And they'll, they'll take, go across a couple times just because of the experience. And I think for, for John and Betty to, to continue to keep this alive is outstanding. I mean, when the bridge was dedicated, the county wanted to scrap this, sell it for scrap. You know, and if we'd lost that at that time, you'd never get it back. And this is, you know, going back to 1811 when it started, you know, is, is real history and people don't realize it. And, and, and for them, their dedication and their love for it to sustain it, I'm just happy to be part of the organization and, and to give, a, give something to people that can't experience it otherwise. So I think it's outstanding. Thank, thank you very much because we've got limited time here. I want to get everybody on. Thank you for those great stories. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The story of a 202 year history of this event. A gentleman has been photographing this. It's going to be in the archives for future generations to see. We certainly want to thank you. Tell them your name, please. Uh, my name is Jeff Zook and I'm really pr happy to be here today. It's really kind of a neat experience. I am so wound just doing this for you guys today. And it's just, it, it is a unique experience. I can remember when I was a kid, it, you know, back in the 60s, riding back and forth on this. So yeah, it's really kind of neat, fun, unique, and I hope it really works out for you. Well, Jeff, you've heard the stories of uh, why it's still alive today because of fabulous array of uh, an army of volunteers. Oh yeah. It, anymore uh, today, I don't care what organization is, uh, local fire departments, whatever, you know, uh, it depends on volunteers. And, you know, I could probably give you a good, pretty good plug for volunteerism today, but it is, it is, it, it, that's exactly what it is, you know, because there's no way that anybody could put together the amount of money that it needs to run this, you know, and it, and it, Really, the backbone is volunteers. Well, I'm going to get you back to your camera. All right. Thank you very much. Glad to meet you. Thank you very much, Jeff. So, Russ Dietrich, we got a friend that's here who loves to take the ferry and uh, certainly loves the history of the area. Uh, Bill Locke, good to see you here. Hey, Jim, good morning. Face uh, the camera. Please. Oh, all right. Channel <laughs> 5. Yeah, is that NBC or ABC there? <laughs> well, Pat, Pat and I wanted to come down and say hi to you and Russ and John and Betty Cheney and all the people that have worked so hard to make this ferry work well, you know. Our neighbors, Dell and Donna Stage, built the, the four pilot houses that are on the ferry uh, a winter ago. Yeah, they spent uh, a good part of their, their one uh, summer season building these uh, pilot houses. And the history of the ferry is great, you know. 200 years, you've been here almost oh, all yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. No. Here we go now, tell me, <laughs> tell me uh, let's see. I, I've told this story before, and I might as well do it again. Yeah, I interviewed Moses. Yes, that's yeah. right, yeah. On the ferry. <laughs> On the ferry, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, um, it's really a special, uh, a special part of Chautauqua Lake and Bemis Point, and the whole county to have the ferry here. Yeah, but Bill, you know, I, well, I have to digress here for a moment. This is part of the history. So is the Boat Museum part of the history. It is. Uh, we're, we're very proud of what uh, the Board of Trustees has been able to do for the Lawson Center and for Dave Lawson, who two weeks ago celebrated his 80th birthday. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real special part, we think, of uh, Bemis Point in Chautauqua County. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Great okay. to see you. Russ. Very interesting, Jim. John's over here. John Cheney's been by my side all during this broadcast. He's listened to everybody make their comments, and the word that keeps uh, th a thread throughout the entire broadcast is volunteer. Well, that's right. And in listening to it here, and you probably say I was anti-politician, <laughs> I've got to say, in all fairness, if it wasn't for Bill Parment, 
and Andy Goodell, this ferry would not be running today because I can go back to a phone call to Andy or to Bill Parment in Albany and saying I will not run the ferry if I got to comply with the state regulations. And he says, cool off, John. What's the problem now? I had to put GPS and what else? Radar. Radar on the ferry. And I told him to go to hell. <laughs> and so, excuse me, Betty hit me in the ribs. <laughs> it, he calls up and he says, don't worry. And it went over. So I've got to say, I do appreciate politicians. Okay. And maybe I'm not anti but we need them in the fireworks. I got to advertise it for that. The casino in particular, they furnish free ice cream to all these people that volunteer wow. in there. And I can go right down the list, all of the restaurants in Bemis Point of what they do. And people want to know where to eat and where not to eat and what they get. And uh, it's kind of an advertising for the whole village, and I'm not going to run down the list of them because I'd forget somebody and I'd catch you. I'd need another hour on the show, John, if you did that. Uh, but, you know, for us, go ahead, Benny. One of the things that we do, uh, that we're doing today, and I don't know if anybody's mentioned, but it's the hospice run today for their bikes. And we do all kinds of things like that um, by appointment, not necessarily when we're running, but if they call and make appointments with us, we'd love to do things like that. Yeah, well, that's what we've noticed all morning long, the, the cyclists that have come on the boat. Well, it's the hospice bicycle run today, yes. There's certainly a lot of people participating. Yes, there should be a, between 100 and 120 bikes today. That, that's it. We've got one tour group. It's uh, nationwide, and she calls me, and she's uh, arranged gas and brass when they come to this area, and that was the Packard cars here a year ago. They motorcycle clubs out of Canada. She charted them all over the country, and she called one last year and says, John, can you give me a restaurant in the area? The one that has has had a problem, and they can't have us. And I says, the casino is just what you need. And they come down and we get a letter from her after, thank you, John, you not only bailed me out, but you was the highlight of the whole gas and brass trip. Oh, wonderful to hear that, John. We're delighted here. Tomorrow. Okay, let, let me, before the time runs out, John and Betty, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to be with you. And uh, thank you for all the work and the spirit you've had to, to make sure history stays alive here. Well, all I got to say is there's a few people that wasn't here today that couldn't be. I'm going to mention them. And I got to mention Martha, between her and the whip next to me, uh, I wouldn't be here. But there was John Weissy. At any time a call, he's available. Uh, Brian Seasai and uh, Sam Jenko. And without them three and Dwayne Brookwhite, this ferry would not be running over the last... 10 to 12 years. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. John and Betty Cheney. Fred, can you come over for a last moment here? Come on over because time is running out. Now, Russ Dietrich and I have just had a distinct pleasure here. You've given us a real uh, experience here, Fred, suggesting that we do this broadcast and we want to give you our thanks. Well, I want to thank you, Jim, for being here. And I know we've had some nice comments today and we've had a lot of people now. And uh, I just talked to Martha John's uh, John's daughter, that truck, I asked her if she'd ever been parking in one like that, and she just poked me and said, yes, she smiled. But uh, there's been a lot of nice vehicles come through here today. There, there's, yeah, we know him very well. There he goes. And I want to thank you, and uh, well, hopefully we've got a piece of history here, and, uh, and it's uh, a nice chance to get this accomplished. So thank you and Russ for coming and doing this program. Well, as uh, John said, uh, there's so many people, we can't get them all in during the broadcast. The uh, volunteers, obviously, as I called it, the Army, that uh, is uh, making it possible for it to remain. Yes, and I tell you, uh, someone's got to take this over because John Cheney's made it happen. And we're looking for that volunteer to follow in John Cheney's footsteps. And we will never, ever uh, not appreciate what John and Betty have done and people like Roger Miller and Art Thomas. Thank you very much. For Thank it. you, Jim. That. Russ Dietrich, what a moment. What a joy. That's why we... Uh, thoroughly enjoy the opportunity to do what we call times of your life because look at what we found out today 
how people have accepted this wonderful historic uh, ferry here and want it to continue forever. Well, they sure have, Jim. It's really a, the times of their life is making the times of life for a lot of people very enjoyable and very refreshing. And I, I, as I listen to you and John and other people talk, you know, there is a budget to operate this ferry and there is an opportunity for people to help with that by making donations. And that doesn't mean you have to take a ride on the ferry and make a donation. You know, you, you can do that otherwise. So if you're listening this morning, you've enjoyed it and you've been excited about it over the years, uh, certainly a, a contribution to the, the Beavis Point Stowe Ferry uh, would be a, a, a nice way to say thank you. Well, the times of your life on WJTN Radio, always presented by the Jamestown Savings Bank. And uh, it's been a great adventure for us uh, since 10.04 this morning to watch the activity that's taken place. Whether you realize it or not, on the other end of this microphone, we've been riding back and forth all morning long. Yes, we have. I, I, I was going to count the trips, and I got so involved with anything else I forgot. But, you know, there's been almost a dozen trips back and forth across the lake this morning. I, I've not been aware of it. Not been aware and not seasick a bit, are we, Jim? No, that's just what they said. You don't realize you're moving. And you still haven't pushed me in the lake. <laughs> Russ, really sincerely, we, we, we've we looked forward to this opportunity and what a wonderful moment it's been for us. It certainly has, Jim. Well, we thank Bryn Tepes on the other side for her great work. We thank the photographers for uh, putting this on tape so that future generations can hear the story that John and Betty Cheney told, Roger Miller told, Fred Coscott, Vince Horrigan, uh, all the volunteers have told a great story. It'll be heard down through the uh, years to come. That's right. It's going to be a, a history that'll live forever. And we'll just feel that it's fitting to play what we call a boat song. Something about a boat, you know what I mean? That will finish the story of the ferry on this Saturday morning. Thank you.